Non-traditional medical students are becoming more and more popular in medical school classes as people are applying to medical school later on in life. Some people take time off to have a family, some attend grad school, and others change careers completely, realizing that medicine is their calling at a later stage. This is what I want to talk about in today's video. I'm going to discuss common types of non-traditional medical students and tell you how to use your background to your advantage when applying to medical school. Lastly, I'll tell you what you need to do as a non-traditional medical school applicant to get into medical school. Hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Don't forget to check out the timestamps in the description of this video if you're looking to navigate quickly to specific sections of the video. What is a non-traditional medical school applicant? Most medical school applicants are considered traditional if they have taken the standard pathway to medicine, high school to university to medical school. These types of applicants generally don't take breaks in between, with the exception of a gap year before medical school, which is common enough that it's still considered fairly traditional. Conversely, a non-traditional medical school applicant refers to anyone who arrives to medicine by taking a different pathway. Some medical schools consider non-traditional applicants to be anyone who has taken two years or more off in between university and medical school. Other than applicants who have taken breaks, there are many other different forms of non-traditional applicants. These include mature applicants, applicants with science backgrounds but who pursued a different field, and even applicants without science backgrounds. Some non-traditional medical students are those who change careers completely. They completed their undergraduate studies, had a career in a specific profession, and then switched completely in order to become a physician. Other non-traditional students simply decided a little bit later in life that they wanted to pursue medicine. Some non-traditional medical students with arts and humanities backgrounds have had their eye on a career in medicine from the beginning of their university studies. If you're in this category, then you might have slotted in science courses alongside your political science, western civilization, music, or economic courses so that you could meet the prerequisite courses needed by some medical schools and simultaneously prepare for the MCAT. Ideally, you would have taken the MCAT in second year and rewritten it again if needed. You would have also volunteered in medicine-related fields and attained extraordinary grades. There is probably also ample evidence on your resume that you are committed to medicine. People with your academic profile are found in every medical school on the continent and contribute significantly to the texture of the class. Your arts and science training allows you to think broadly and systematically and rely on first principles to understand and not just memorize the material. You are, however, likely new to concepts about problem-based learning, but can adapt over time. Other non-traditional students decide near the end of university that they're interested in medicine. If this is you, you have one top job when applying to medical school. You must be able to answer the question, why do you want to be a doctor, and you need to be able to answer it with conviction, purpose, and detail. This is the most important question for two reasons. First and foremost, knowing why you want to be a doctor in itself is a source of motivation. On those tough days when you're wading through new topics in an MCAT prep course and everyone else is way ahead of you, you'll need to know why you're putting yourself through the effort. It is worth it, but only if you know why you want to be a doctor. Second, if you know why you want to be a doctor, you can target your volunteer and extracurricular eff efforts to fit in with your story in a cohesive, sensical way. While your resume may have nothing that indicates a desire to work with people, an interest in physiology or pharmacology, or even experience with hands-on skills, if you have strong grades, good MCAT scores, and a clear narrative for your medical career, you can still have a decent shot at acceptance. You should spend time finding volunteer and research opportunities that demonstrate empathy, critical thinking, ability to learn in a clinical setting, and professionalism. Your story matters when admissions committees are trying to figure out if you fit at their school. Highlight that your story is unique, but address it with authentic efforts to demonstrate your commitment to the field. While the number of accepted non-traditional medical school students varies from year to year, you can be assured that medical schools are hunting for non-traditional students that can adapt and thrive in medical training. 
If you're a mature student, your strengths lie in experimental learning, possibly even self-directed graduate studies, and knowing what it's like to have a career. This makes you much more like your everyday patient than many other applicants. Mature students, however, should know that the algorithms to determine admission don't technically capture this life experience in an obvious way. So what you'll need to do is focus on channeling your experience into stellar personal statements during the CASPER test, and if you're invited, develop the interview skills that will illustrate your integrity, experience, and adaptability. As a non-traditional student, you must be able to explain why you want to be a doctor, but with particular attention to why your current career is not satisfying if you already have one. For example, maybe you've been working in policy development. You're starving for an opportunity to help people solve problems. You want to work one-on-one -on -one with people and you desire a chance for lifelong learning. Medicine could be a perfect fit for you. So a question that we commonly get is how can I get accepted as a non-traditional applicant? If you fit into the non-traditional medical school applicant category, you definitely have a chance of getting accepted to medical school. How high your chances are will depend on a variety of factors. First, I want to set the record straight, and that is that medical schools don't prefer traditional applicants over non-traditional applicants. Admissions committees have evolved, and instead, of, and instead of looking for the same type of student, they want to admit applicants with a wide variety of interests, talents, and backgrounds. They want to bring diversity to the table, and they recognize that diversity comes in many shapes and forms. Of course, you can't just submit an application and hope for the best. Spending significant time thinking through your narrative, planning ways to strengthen your CV, and understand more about what makes an ideal doctor is important. Even if you came from a high-ranking career in another discipline, you probably need support in planning your application. Time and effort upfront can help you avoid the classic mistakes of mature and non-traditional students and improve your chances of acceptance. If you have completed some or all of the required coursework for medical school, that's a great first step. But how competitive are your grades? For your reference, the average MCAT score of matriculants at US medical schools is just over 511 and the average GPA is 3.73. Each school will have different required coursework for their program, so make sure that you check and take all necessary courses if you haven't already completed them. It's best to take these courses as close together as possible so that everything stays fresh in your mind, especially if you need to take or retake the MCAT. If you determine that your GPA isn't overly competitive, it's a good idea to retake courses to boost your overall score or consider enrolling in post-bachelorate programs which will help you bridge between undergraduate and medical school. If you don't have any of the required coursework or if you didn't do well throughout your studies, post-bachelorate programs may be a solution for you as they will condense the classes that you have to take into a streamlined schedule which will take less time to complete, enabling you to satisfy medical school prerequisites. Some of these courses also include MCAT preparation courses to help you get ready for the MCAT if you haven't taken it already or if you need to retake it. On the subject of the MCAT, some medical schools are still accepting the old MCAT, but many will only accept a recent MCAT score, so make sure you check the school's program requirements to find out. If you took the MCAT years ago, it's likely that you'll have to rewrite it to meet the school's requirements. Be sure that you schedule your MCAT after you've completed your pre-med coursework, as most of what will be on the MCAT will be covered in these courses. The next thing I want to touch on is clinical experience. In particular, shadowing experience. This is absolutely necessary to obtain in order to be seen as a competitive applicant for medical school. Some non-traditional applicants plan for the possibility of applying to medicine later on and have therefore obtained shadowing experience and have worked or volunteered in the medical field already. If you don't fall into that category, you'll need to work on gaining experiences, especially shadowing experience. This is important not only to gain better understanding of the profession, but also to help you truly determine if medicine is the right path for you. Keep in mind that if you already work in the medical field, as a PA or as a nurse for example, you still need shadowing experience. Even though you're working in a similar field, it's not the same as following around a doctor for a day as they complete their day-to-day -day duties. You may have an advantage in other areas and likely have a strong grasp on medical terminology and possess valuable experience interacting with patients, problem solving, and working in a similarly stressful environment. Use all of these aspects to your benefit when filling out your medical school applications. The goal is to highlight the fact that you're a non-traditional medical school applicant, not hide it. So this wraps up another one of our videos, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any other questions that I didn't cover in today's video. 
Let me know in the comments section what type of non-traditional medical student you are. Do you need more advice for how you can get into medical school? If you let me know, I'll be sure to get back to you with my recommendations. Finally, if you'd like us to help you with your medical school application, go to bmomedapplication.com to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks for watching. See you next time.